Hello everyone, welcome back to the ACU podcast, episode 7. Today we got Logan, Austin, and Eric here. Hey. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, gamers and stuff and some misconceptions about them. I mean, stereotypical gamers. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, kind of starting off here, we got a, kind of a list to go through. So one of the first ones that got brought up is uh, like the the typical assumption that gamers' diets are like a bad diet. You know, you always think of it as oh well, all they do is eat Doritos and you know and drink Mountain Dew. So Connor, what do you got? What do you got? You want to add anything to that or? Um, I'm gonna say that that's not true. That's a stereotype. Um, so like. You're saying that a diet, like a bad diet, like uh, gamers, they get like fat or o- overweight. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I, I kind of I, like to open it up. I guess the stereotype is that you know you you think of gamers that you know all they do is they sit in the dark all day. All they do is you know they eat nasty food, all that. You know they don't get out, they don't get any exercise or anything. And I mean that's that's a pretty common misconception al- among. Um, people that don't game or that haven't or that are very very casual you know they pick up one or two hours a week you know and that's they think of everybody as these awful just gross people that all they do is just stuff their face full of you know hot pockets and everything else so it may have been the same thing back in like the 90s age when the star wars is out and that's all they did <clears throat> but for example for us though it's like you both work as a hard work. He works at a cement place, or you work at hard work and lifting. He works at the same place as you do, and I work with building shit material. We're nonstop eight hour shifts. Yes, I do have like shades, like the darkest. That's only because my eyes fucking hurt. Right. Yeah. No, I mean it's 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 become more and more common. I feel like nowadays to wear. Um, Gaming is more of a casual. Every everybody does it. You know, it's not more of like a, a antisocial. Nobody really thinks of uh, gamers as like a, a, a normal person. Where you know nowadays everybody does. It's you know the guy next to you probably is picking up a game after work and playing Fortnite or you know a group a group of people that are talking as you walk by and let's say like your school or whatever. You know they're probably going home playing some other type of multiplayer game. You know they're not just sitting there filling their face full of just nasty food, you know, not talking to anybody. Uh, Eric, you know, um, what do you, you know, do you have anything to add about it? Uh, I mean, uh, I think part of it is true. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, when you're sitting out and playing video games, when was the last time you had a salad or some hard-boiled yeah. eggs yeah. or a glass of water, you plus, know, you I mean. Know, plus, when it comes to that, though, I mean, the majority of people who start out as gamers are the stereotypical ones because that's all they're thinking when they first start becoming. Like, for example, you're like a kid, a teenager who doesn't understand, doesn't understand proper diet and everything else, and so that's all you're kind of used to doing is eating junk in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess the mindset. If if you go into it with that mindset of, uh, well, this is what everybody else does, so I might as well do it too. I guess I can kind of see that. Um, I feel like if if it really just depends on the person. I feel like not everybody does it. I feel like it's a pretty common thing to. Yeah, I mean sometimes you'll pick up a bag of chips and start munching. I mean I, I'm pretty sure we've all done that yeah, while yeah. playing games. Or drink a can of soda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got like a jug of lemonade if anything at home. Yeah. You know, you always pick up something unhealthy. But, I mean, for the, to say that everybody does it or to say that it's a very common thing for everybody just to sit there and have these nasty obsessions with, like, Hot Pockets. And, you know, um, a good example of that, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, uh, the World of Warcraft episode of South Park. Have you guys ever seen that one? Yep. No. Yeah, where, you know, he's sitting in his basement and his, he calls for his mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's that stereotype right there at, at, at work. The South Park episode when they're also in the basement just eating Doritos and using hand cream with him playing rules. Yeah, exactly. 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 And then you know, he calls down for his mom for more hot pockets. You know, it's it's that it's that misconception right there that that uh, that just isn't true a lot of the times. You know, a lot of these people that are gaming now are people that have jobs, go out, you know, do things other than just sit there in their basement and game. Not to say that there isn't those people. I mean, I'm sure we all know somebody that has done that before, or, you know, something like that. But I would say, for the most part, it's a pretty big misconception. Uh, We got another one here. Uh, 
first person or not even first person, just a single player gamers don't have any friends or you know aren't open to playing multiplayer games. All they want to do is just play for uh, you know single player uh, games, whether that's first person, whether you got some action adventure, anything like that. Um, what do you guys have to think about that? What do you got, Connor? Well, so like friends, like talking to people like online, like meeting new people like online or like outside of e- either or. I would say I would say either you have a group of friends or you like know your you're, life you're open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like because the majority of people think when people say, "Oh, I have friends," do you mean like Facebook friends? And like that doesn't count. Like yeah, I mean debatable, but still, I mean. <clears throat> Well, and I think, too, a lot of people meet um, friends through games, you know, whether that's, you know, yep. you're playing, you're playing, a, well, even if you're playing a single player game, you know, you go up to a guy, you're, you know, whoever you work with, and you're just talk about your single player game. Well, he might play that game also, or he might have played another single player game, or, you know, you go into the GameStop or the Best Buy to go get the game, and you guys openly start talking about it. You know, I... I I don't think that first per or, uh, not first person sorry single player games are strictly people who have no friends. I think it's I think it's a good investment and a good time spent if you want to play alone maybe for a change. But that doesn't mean you know you don't have friends. What do you got, Austin? I think when that comes to the whole playing alone, I think it's just based on people's like how they grew up with people gaming. Like why? Like again, when you start as a gamer, you're kind of young and you're trying to learn everything about it. When it comes to that, sorry. When it comes to that, though, you're trying to get used to all of it, and because of that, you don't understand the perspective everyone else is having. So it's harder to relate to those people because you're not sure. Because when you're a kid, you're kind of worried if someone will agree with you or someone won't. Right. And because that prevent that one barrier that's preventing you from doing that in the first place. Right. Is having that single conversation that would probably lead to that friendship in the first place. Right. Yeah, I know. For me, when I was growing up, uh, it was mainly single player games. My my parents wouldn't really let me play a lot of the multiplayer games just from the fear of the toxic people that they would encounter online. Whether, yeah, you know, whether, yeah. That's, whether that's kids, other kids, or that's adults that are, you know, getting angry at you for being a kid, or just just the just the concept of potentially having, like, a toxic really, uh, encounter with somebody else. Um, even if, you know, even if I was playing, like, an MMO or something, uh, a lot of the time, my parents would be like, well, you know, there's a lot of MMO aspects of it, but we want you to do more of, like, a single-player aspect of it. We don't want you to get online. You ever, you ever have any encounter with uh, toxic people online that have kind of made you think, well, single-player games are more or less something I want to do? What are you thinking? Are you I don't I don't know if necessarily toxic, but kind of going on what you said, uh, obviously, Austin, what Austin said, too, is my first introduction was Pokemon, obviously, of course. You know, you're a young kid, you got your DS, yep. and for me, uh, Pokemon in general, just like the category Pokemon, was always a social thing. You know, everybody had it. Everybody had the cards. Everybody played the games. Yep. But, like, when I first got my game, I never did, like, any battling, no trading. Like, it was years before I even did anything like that. But it was, like, an entry-level game because when you think of a Pokemon game, you know, the main aspect of it is the story. You know, like, training with people, that's, like, a, an additional thing. You know, you basically do your own thing. Other people aren't involved when you're playing through the game right. so I think I think single player games have their aspect of course something like Zelda or Fallout they're more content based and it's easier for somebody to go and buy and say okay I want to dump $60 on this because I'm going to get many many hours of entertainment of something different well the multiplayer game usually won't have as much content but you'll have that aspect of being able to play with other people so it's kind of like you're picking your poison trading off what you want to do kind of going off of Eric would have said when it comes to those multiplayer games, some of those have those requirements. Like for Destiny, for example, when you were younger in the beginning days of Destiny, it was required to have six people for this. And it's like, I can never get randos and they probably won't know anything. I might, might not get it done in time, but if I knew people that would get it done, it'd be good. Right. And that was hard to find those. <clears throat> for us, it was lucky because I met some guy <clears throat> who recognized my gamer tag from a TV show or whatever. And after I met him, I met someone else. 
and that one other person was named Chicken. And ever since that, well, that's his guarantee. But ever since that day, him and his family and like two other people have been playing with us for the past like two years now, and we've even become Facebook friends at this point. And we actually were thinking of one time actually going on a trip there. He's only a few bit away, but it's not too bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think in terms of saying that single player gamers are more or less unlikely to have friends is it's just, it's just wrong. I mean, I, you know, even like you said, you know, you could be playing, let's say, an MMO or some type of massive multiplayer game that you know, like a COD or something like that, and you just happen to meet up with somebody, or something happens, or you know, it, it, there's always opportunity to make friends, and I think that. Uh, for me personally, I liked the way that my parents did it, where they kind of kept me away from that multiplayer aspect, at least while I was young. That way I didn't develop a toxic behavior towards other people. And um, you wouldn't kind of like meet those people that would cause that toxic behavior as well? Yeah, yeah and, and, and toxicity in gaming nowadays is definitely on the rise, I'd say, especially as you get more and more into the culture of gaming becoming socially acceptable yeah um you know along with games like fortnite and everything that are that are mainly based <clears throat> oh well i mean they're based for everybody but they have the graphical style and the rating for a younger audience um it's that just it just allows <clears throat> that that kind of behavior to you know come right in so i think but you know i think on the topic of of the the fur, you know like this the single player aspect of it i i would say you know you're, you're kind of what you, you what you want to play. I wouldn't say it depends yeah. on friends. I would say it just depends on what you prefer to play. When you're starting to get as a game where you kind of get that aspect where you kind of almost figure out, like within about a year or two, of what you actually would like, and then you kind of go based on that for like kind of later on. It does take time to adjust if you do different play styles. Right. That's only because of the friends and interactions you make afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> on that Pokemon topic, actually, Pokemon was one of the first games I had actually gotten. That was my own game. And uh, I had a neighbor, actually, that had, uh, didn't play it, hadn't gotten a DS or anything, and he actually went out and purchased a DS and uh, purchased the same Pokemon game that I had so that we could actually like meet up in person and play. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a big misconception, I think. I think right. it, it, it's really just based on personal preference, what you prefer to play. So, um, I have something else on that topic. So, some sometimes we get, like, you know, bored with single-player games and we want to like play with them friends yeah and I think it's also good to like for uh, multiplayer it's good to meet these new people and be a part of a uh, community you know yeah yeah I think especially along that topic you know um, let's say you, you know you have a hard time for whatever reason making friends um, whether that be in your childhood in your adulthood you know whatever whatever kind of person you are I would say that gaming in a way actually makes it easier to find friends and to you know get a community or going mid connection yeah 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 get that get that first step into making you know even if like I said even if you're just that kind of person that just isn't into friends I think it makes it easier to uh, get friends I know me personally like knowing you guys through well not Austin but yeah. you know through our mutual group at least um, us gaming together actually brought most of us a lot closer um, and a lot yeah. for like a better connection between us so playing that Rocket League I'm yeah Rocket say. League or <laughs> straight up three days in a row nonstop. oh my god Rocket League worms uh, you know <laughs> can, I go, can I go off on that whole like, yeah for sure so when I was <clears throat> when I first started gaming I didn't have many friends help I mean I wouldn't have met these guys or any of them without Kane, I think it was, and that wasn't through high school, if anything. If it wasn't for that, <clears throat> I don't think I would be where I am right now. But before I did, but in order to got, get there, I started on 360, like everyone else kind of starts in that kind of old age kind of type of thing. Right. And I was playing Sprint Cell Blockers, and all I do is play multiplayer, and I would never, ever talk to anyone because when you're playing, starting multiplayer for the first time, you don't want to talk to people because you're worried what they'll say and all that. So I didn't have a mic, and I was still playing multiplayer when it was required almost to a point. Right. I played like nonstop, made friends, and I got to a point where I used to play on my phone to a point where I had the app or whatever for the game or whatever. And because of that, I met Kane through my class, and that's how I met everyone else here. And I just started hanging with them after a point, and then now I play with all of them now at this point. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think it's a pretty big misconception. So actually, moving on to that, we got another one here that kind of connects that. Uh, 
uh, that all gamers are kind of socially awkward. Now, <coughs> I think this one is really dependent on the person, not so much the gaming, and I think it yeah, helps. Yeah, I agree with that. You're not wrong, because for me, I have Asperger's and ADHD, and I already have a social disorder to a point yeah. because of that. But through gaming, I still got friends, and that's perfectly fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, and along this, you know, the fact that it's saying that, you know, all gamers are kind of socially awkward. Um, if anything, I think that gaming actually helps people that are socially awkward rather than to say that all gamers are. Um, it definitely opens up a window that naturally you wouldn't have had otherwise if you are a socially awkward person. Uh, this, you know, it, it, it leads you to more of a way to open up to people. Uh, what do you got, Connor? You got anything? Yeah, I mean, talking to someone online and not really in person does help first. So to get to know someone, like, online and playing games with them um, and then meeting them, up, like, eventually, that sure. does does help a lot. Right. Yeah, I think it would help. Um, you know, along, along the same lines as that, though, you know, you, you have those people that would say, well... Wouldn't that add to you being more socially awkward than when you were in real life if you only talk to people online? What do you got on that, Austin? My defense would be on that one is, for me, like, for example, come back to the example of Chicken, who I mentioned before. When I first met him, all I could think of was, <clears throat> what, like, when you talk to a person, and this is kind of for someone who has Asperger's and HD, talking to a person, the first thing you want, like, all I can think of is, like, trying to figure out what, who they are, what they are like, or what their face likes to get an idea of what I'm trying to who I'm trying to get to know when it comes to online people but after a while you kind of get to know and then after, like I did like I said when it comes to that Facebook point it's like okay well now I know what to do I think meeting someone online first sure. is probably an easier way to connect with that person versus just starting right off the bat face to face it's kind of like going to an interview versus <clears throat> tech support almost. When you do tech support, you're like trying to get to just to get, sometimes you might get to know them just to make it things easier, like they'll try to get your name or you're trying to get theirs just to make it easier. And you can easily fly by that process in about 15 minutes to 10. Versus going to a job interview and meeting that person for the very first time face to face. You never know if it's a boss or just a regular worker. And because you're meeting the face to face you have that more tension because you're right then and there trying to make a first impression yeah yeah i think it definitely opens up a door that makes it a lot easier to have communication now again another argument that people would probably bring up is the toxicity again you know where people say well i would love to you know meet people online and you know start that first opportunity yeah but I'm afraid you know what's gonna happen if I get online and all I do is just get you know crapped on for how bad I am what do you got on that Eric um, I don't think it's really something that you should worry about. Uh, I mean, these people that would be these toxic people are, you know, something you can pick and choose. You know, you're not going to go hang out with the guy who said, hey, I banged your mom when you're playing Black Ops, you know. Right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's and it, like, like you said, going back to what Austin was saying, I think it's easier to meet people online. Yes, it does make it more socially awkward, I think, because when you meet somebody in first person, in person for the first time you've never met them before I don't think it's that awkward I think it's more awkward if you talk to them online before than it is talking to them later so I mean there's a give and take but I mean it's good to learn the person before you end up seeing them so yeah and I, I mean on the lot like on the same lines as that you know a lot of the times now games offer uh, a lot of ways for you to either report the person or try yeah, to filter who you're yeah a lot of filtering options now are being added in where you know you could you could hit ignore um and just not hear them a lot of times you'll have a vote to like kick them from the party or something along those lines where it makes it a lot easier for you to pick and choose you know kind of who you want to talk to and get that first easy start into a game and a lot of times there's even communities built up around uh, new gamers or gamers that are new to a certain game but are looking to start off playing multiplayer right uh, so I think you know if, if, if the socially awkward concept is I wouldn't say it, okay. it, it's very 
uh, it's there, but it takes time getting used to. Yeah. To the point. Because, like, don't again going off of Eric what he said. It's like yes, you have the front erection. Yes, it is so awkward. I will agree, it's more awkward than you afterwards. But it's better to get another person online before because that way you know what you're working with. Kind of, and plus, when you do meet, at least you have something to go off of to start a conversation. Yeah. They're just sitting there trying to figure, looking at them like, it's a favorite color red. Do they look like they dress based on the dress? I think they work there. Maybe they can go off of this. Like that only works like barely half the time. But versus when you talk to them at least someone online and you know exactly how to start a conversation. Yes, it'll be social awkward, but if you get that first conversation going, then it won't be so awkward as, as long as it would have if you just met in person. That's it. Yeah, that and I, I think I think it opens up a like. A situation where you you know you you have that middle ground now where even if you're not let's say you're meeting somebody in real life and you're just meeting them for the first time well now through this interaction that you've had through gaming and everything you might be more willing to open up a conversation whereas before if you hadn't actually met people online or hadn't even tried you know you wouldn't have been willing to meet that person so I think it definitely helps out a lot in terms of if you are socially awkward it's a good start to try to open you up if you're not well that's fine too there's a great you know you can always find good communities uh, online so moving on to the next one here we got the you know going off of that South Park thing before where you know <laughs> gamers are always living in their basement or you know the, con the conception is that they're always they're in with their parents they're there with their parents when they're 30 living in their basement expensive computer expensive whatever setup and that's where their life is going what do you got Connor I think it's on the type of person not really games <laughs> it, it, it's yeah, yeah, I think I think it's I wouldn't say gaming leads to that. I would say it's kind of chosen by the person. Um, I would say that if you were to openly look at somebody and say, because you're a gamer, you have to live in your parents' basement, I would say that's that's just an yeah, irrational that's not thought. True. Yeah, I mean, I you know, to say that people only. Um, <coughs> live in these kind of situations where you know they get so involved in their gaming that they just don't pursue anything in life what do you got to add on that see when it comes to the first part of that when it comes to the whole living in the basement part i think to me that's just because a majority of people who start off as gaming are people who are young they don't have of course they're gonna live with their parents because right. they're under age for one or they're college students you <laughs> yes know. and when you when you're kind of um, when you start playing games that age group is technically around say 18 or they're tw like in 25 those are people who are going to college or in high their final years in high school or whatever beginning high school years and they want some space of their own because they want to start making those boundaries to start to split off from their parents so yes they may be in their basement who knows it might be a man cave hell we're right now in the basement for example and this is pretty much like a living like a home theater for crying out loud as is right yeah pretty much and then for and then maybe like for me example I have my own room but yes it's not in the basement but I have my own space where yes I like you guys know that I've put a lot of money into gaming but that's only because I just want a better quality type of thing versus okay I'm gaming yes if it's me become my hobby I rather invest like for example if someone's like hobby is I don't know for example music they're gonna spend a lot of money on music services or CDs person has hobby Legos yes they will buy hundred our Lego sets yep. that are for kids that are ten year olds, but but that's because it's their hobby. It's yeah. something they grew up with. Yeah, and I think you just, can't put a price on memories that you grew up with, right? Because someone can't unless because someone can't relate to because if someone can't understand that, it's because they just didn't have the same experience as you, and no one does. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's very individual based. I think that some people, and I mean, I'm not not to say that there isn't those thirty year olds that are living, you know, that have chose that life for themselves. But on average, a lot of people that do live with their parents in game, like you said, are between that age of 18 and 25. Um, 
that have other things going on, have other activities, and they're you know they just don't have anywhere or like the financial stability to move out, you know. Yeah. So and, and it's not only to say that they might be in their parents' basement, like you said, you know, they might have their own room or something like yeah. that. So I mean, on that line, you know, let's say you you know you invite somebody over for the first time and they see that and they're instantly like, what is going on? This guy must live with his, you know, must he's going to be with his parents forever, you know. What would you kind of put on that, Eric? I don't know how I would put on that because if somebody was to walk into my game room, they're going to think, yeah, you know, this guy, he obviously lives with his parents. Hell, his game room's about three inches away from his parents' room. Right. But regardless, it's really just a matter of choice because at this point in my time in life, yes, I could move out, but why would I? Yeah, it's more financially out. stable to live with my parents, and if they allow me to stay there, I'm going to do it. It's not going to be forever, and of course not. And when I move out, I'm going to bring all my stuff with me and put it in my place anyway right. but it's not something that prohibits it it's gaming does not cause a lazy person to sit at home and do nothing it's a person's financial stability that they grew up with and it's it's their willingness to work and their ethic it's not it doesn't have anything to do with gaming somebody who is obsessed with watching netflix will have the same problem yeah. they'll sit inside and watch netflix all day it's not any different than somebody sitting inside and playing video games right yeah so i mean it's just you know I think it's it's one of those things where people have that conception of uh, well, I look at this, I see this the South Park episode or gaming is bad. Yeah, it gaming makes bad. lazy people. They, and those parents or whoever's older always looks at, like comes at to mind because that's when gaming came out originally or whatever. It was looked down upon, right? Because everyone thought, okay, that's something new. It's very dangerous. Rotting our because, children's minds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like everyone thinks when something new comes out, everyone thinks, okay, what are the bat? What are the cons of this? Not the pros. That the first thing that comes to mind. It's always the cons. Right. And when they grow up with that, or the adults, I mean, not talking about the kids, but the adults, when they grow up with that, it gets to a point where, like, okay, I don't want them to go even go near this. It's like smoking to a point. Like, I don't want my kids to do this. When they turn that age, that's their choice. And then when people see that, then it's like, okay, it makes things worse. But then there's those people who are wise enough to make the decision, I'm going to be gaming, yes, but I will be reasonable with it. Yeah, I think that comes down to... Uh, what you're, yeah, like if, if you're gonna make your certain time for it. Now there is those people that spend hours, hours, and hours. Upon hours, you know, sitting at the computer or sitting on the couch playing games, and you don't make time for anything else. I think if you're if you're a gamer, well, and you know, this, that's a stereotype at the same time yeah. too, because a large percentage of gamers are people that you know pick up the game, they play for a couple hours, maybe a week. You know, you're maybe they average like 10, 15 hours a week, not even. Um, you know, and you know. They got a job. They got kids. They got a family. A house. Yeah. Bills. Uh, I think that it's just such a, like you said, it's it's that it's that fear tactic of they don't know what it is because they yeah. didn't grow up with it, so therefore it's bad. And there's also the economy aspect where it's like, okay, this is sixty dollars compared to everything else. Right. Where it's like fifteen fifteen bucks for Netflix. Yeah. For example, fifteen bucks. Yeah. Okay. I can watch my spare time. I pay sixty. Okay. I have to use this at some point. It's like buying a TV. You're not gonna pay three hundred dollars. For TV and only use it for like okay, I'm gonna buy another one. That doesn't happen because you invested how much in it. And that's how it took you how long to get. Right. And a lot of times, in all those games, you're waiting. If you you know it, you get you get the like especially nowadays you get the release the release date or whatever and then yeah, the pre order chance pre for and then they moment. just keep you know sending out uh, you know gameplay trailers and trailers and you'll see them all over ads on Facebook. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I've Again, seen a Black Ops Four ad. Yeah, you know. games are like for for God's sake they cost like okay so they cost like sixty bucks to a hundred dollars if anything. T that takes again back to what I said. It takes how long to get that much, especially for person people who are trying to move out and people. Who who are just beginning gaming in their senior year and all that, mm -hmm. that's very difficult because you're just now starting to get used to having a job. That's pretty much what you're going to have for the rest of your life to a point. Right. And it's like, okay, i got to figure this out, and they don't know how to spend money wisely enough to that point. Right. And a lot of these kids, you know, that are these 18 to 25 um, 
or even younger, you know, you could say 16 or yeah. whatever. They have part-time jobs, you know. They're not, they're not generally, on average, they're not generally a full-time. Yeah, four hours yeah. a day at best. Yeah, four to five, you know, you're working just to make just to make ends meet so you can kind of pay for some food or whatever, you know. Yeah. $60 is quite a bit yeah, to ask. And if you do spend that $60, you know. And you, you don't want, have it. Yeah, you want to be, and you're going to get into that mindset of, well, I spent $60 on this. I want to sit down and play it. That doesn't necessarily mean that you, you should waste going, like a whole day. Yeah, you know. All right, I spent seventy thousand dollars on this car. I'm gonna go and drive it. Yeah, yeah, but for at least hundred thousand miles. It. Yeah, it doesn't mean you drive it across the country that day. Right. No, you just you <laughs> you drive the amount of hour, like mileage over time. You right. Just do it that one fucking day. I think it just comes down to essentially you to say that all gamers live in their parents' basement or you know are gonna be with their parents forever. I think it's just it's kind of just a thing where it depends on like you said your work ethic, your time, what you have going on. Age. Your, yeah, your age. What you know? What your certain circumstance is at the time. I don't think it's every single person. You know, like I said, with all of these, you're gonna have the occasional person that does fit that stereotype. And majority of people who start gaming are in that age criteria, anyways, who are in that situation. Yeah, exactly. So I think I think it's just a pretty big stereotype on that one. Start it. All right. So yeah, moving on to the next topic here. We got uh, video games are only meant for guys. So I think that's definitely false. Uh, yeah, it's definitely false. Mm. And it's definitely a big stereotype between how guys view that topic and how a woman would view that topic now. Because I think that at first maybe it was. Yeah. Like and well even now like you know you think of like an average teenage boy. That's yeah. It. He's you know he's automatically gonna assume oh I'm much better than a, a girl at this game. Girls can't play video games you know it's it's i think that for them i think it's just a generational thing like it's different for each generation so what do you got on that connor um well i think that that's false because video games i mean there are plenty of girls that play video games right yeah and you see like a lot of girls nowadays that like review games and everything they got the what, i can't remember her name but she's on ign all the time she i but yeah no, got, we know why I, okay, but yeah, you got you know you got tons of people that review games now, and a lot of them are you know female, a lot of them are male. It's a pretty standard you know thing now to have women in the gaming culture. Um, what do you got on that? Awesome. I think it's like again, you're back going off what you said. It's like a generation type thing. Like there was the old, there was like a generation, the generation kind of like about ten, maybe twenty years before us, were just again now like kind of getting used to the whole women's type of thing, being involved in everything, kind of being equal and all that. I will agree. That's like old, very old days. See, my dad has troubles that I try to remember, try to remind him. No, it is because it's a new generation type of thing. Right. And so I think it's just that we're just getting out of that time where now it's gonna be fully kind of understood that everyone's equal. It's fine. That's. I mean, that I think that's where it's trying to get to right now. Is where it is. Yeah, I think we're kind of stuck in that situation in gaming and in even life, just a social life, aspect. So, yeah. Yeah, where it's just. It's 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 a, it's a big change where everybody is trying to push for equality. Yeah. Um, even though it's already there, it's just in the mindset of people, it's not. Yeah. And I think with gaming, it definitely shows. For instance, again, I can bring up World of Warcraft. I used to be in, um, a, you know, a, a guild as most people are in, in that game, and the guild leader and the one who ran like every raid that we did was a female. And a lot of people were a hundred percent against that. They thought, well, how are we supposed to get through? she doesn't even know she doesn't game all that often and she was actually pretty good you know she led us to a lot of victories in a lot of our raids we got to for a reason it. yeah and you know it's it's not like she just randomly decided well i'm just going to start playing and I, i'm a girl so i can do it you know she actually invested time into the game mm -hmm. she researched things she ran a really tight guild um and that's just how it is now i think that women are more and more becoming gamers and i think especially in the young Younger generation, like we're just not like the like young teenagers and everything, just aren't accepting that fact yet. Uh, Same with people who are older, trying to tell those kids that don't start gaming to this point. Now they're especially saying that to people who are female because when the older kind of people are kind of not used to that sort of thing, yet right? As well. And yeah, especially and so they're pre setting it for everyone else when they're younger. It's like no, especially yeah, and especially too. Like I know a lot of a lot of people say like in terms of parents where the father is more open to the kid gaming than the, the mother. Um, 
personally for me, uh, it was always it was my dad that was more into gaming, but my mom wasn't opposed to it. I think she went for you was know, just worried about yeah, the whole we, rod in the mine type aspect. Not even that. I think it was just more of he he he's not going to get outside a lot. You know, he's not really going to do any of the things like a teenage boy should do. But uh, you know, it, it that's that was the mindset. Yeah. You know, See, for me it was kind of opposite. Where my mom was the one that was okay with gaming because her side of the family was more encouraging of most things versus my dad who had a harder childhood than the fact that people that he knew never seen not a single one ever game right and so i think to me it's just he didn't understand that type of thing and as he got all it's hard to explain as it is to him as it got more and more involved with people in that type of age group as well right. versus my mom who's in that age group who just started gaming to a point and then she's more open to it as long as my parents my dad's one where he was just the amount of time i would take yes you do invest a lot of time back to go over we used to, what we said before that's only because you spend how much and you have to put that amount of time where you think is value to that. Right. What do you got, Eric? You got anything to add? Uh, I want to say gaming is not directed towards women. I don't believe that uh, the premise of gaming is really something that was designed around women. Neither was it designed around men. I don't think it was you know, specifically made for boys, but you can tell that gaming is obviously steered towards men. Men, as there's a lot of suggestive themes that more correlates with males than it does females and as for games like you know going back to my example Pokemon didn't even have an option for a female trainer in the yeah. beginning because it was you know they just didn't think that you know that was something that females did you know back in the 90s guys were all about you know playing video games so that's just what they did and like as you can see now in presence day you know it's a standard to have male or female when you're picking your character now I mean it's very rare that you get a game like that. And even Breath of the Wild was optioning to have a female character before it was released. So I, you know, I, I don't believe that you know the stereotype for women aren't allowed in gaming. I mean, there's nothing like that. But it's just, it's not really. I don't know. I feel like we're kind of. It was more skewed towards guys. The line, the line is getting more and more blurred, and that's not a bad thing. There shouldn't be anything wrong with women playing video games, nor is there anything wrong with, you know, just that whole premise in general. There's, I mean, it's, nothing should be geared towards a certain sex. It just should be entertaining for anybody who finds interest in it, regardless right. of their sex. Be, yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's essentially a hobby, and whoever finds interest in it should be able to play it how they want Exactly. To you know, whether, if you, you shouldn't be forced into, well, I can only play That's as a criteria. male. Yeah, I can only play as a male because somebody didn't put in a female option, or vice versa. You know, I can only play as a female because nobody put in a male option. I think it's just because in the beginning days, again, it was towards, it was more skewed towards guys because that's, again, getting out of that whole era of back in the day where it was like the way the things were, which wasn't good, getting to this modern age where this is how it is now and it's, probably, it's better off being this way kind of a thing. Right. So again, it's just trying to get that criteria that was skewed towards guys now it's being today modernized to a point where yes, now it's more blurred. Eric is right; it's getting more blurred, which is a good thing too. Because yeah. now it's getting more and more. Yes, people are finally understanding that it wasn't just meant for guys; it was meant for everyone. It's a hobby, like you said at the end of the day. That's what it is. Right. And yeah, it's it's good to have it accessible to everybody. It's good not even just for the general consumer, but it looks better on you know the developer, the publisher, whoever is releasing the game. Game, you know, you're gonna get more income through that way if you appeal it to a broader audience yep. versus if you just keep it specifically gender, one gender, and that's it. So I think I think it it kind of factors into everything um, in terms of why it's becoming more and more of a thing. But I think a large part of it obviously goes into the you know the publisher and the developer seeing a bigger chance at a financial gain. Yeah. Adding that broader spectrum. So um, what Eric was saying that um, gaming isn't really targeted towards a specific gender. I feel like it's how like um, our minds are built um, versus men and um, women. Like if we were to like play like a game like Doom, um, 
it's just how our minds are built, like that kind of stuff. Like we like, you know, like rough and you know that blood and like gore yeah. and um, stuff like that. That yeah, I can women see, don't really. I can see what you mean. Where like if, if you you know you turn on a game like Doom, you know you're doing all sorts of crazy kind of finishers. Bloods going everywhere. There's mm-hmm. just all sorts of violence. Guns shooting right. everywhere. Yeah, and uh, but it, that also depends on the kind of person you are too. You know, mm-hmm. it's not to say that females wouldn't be more open to a, right. What you know, playing a game like that. It's, it's just, just it's that a more, more on the stereotype of yeah. men. Exactly, because yeah. you've had I've you know I've had it where you've seen women and some of them are just like you know they'll they'll play like a game like I don't know like Mario or Rocket League something that's right. simple Mario easy to pick Mario. up Mario yeah something that's it's super easy for them to concept or like a story based game something like a Telltale game because it's super easy you're basically just playing through a story you know I mean but then there's also the girls who play Call of Duty yeah. uh, God of War you know like games that you play. And you wouldn't expect a woman to play. Yeah, but. see, if, if, like, going on with that, there was a friend of mine who never played a single game in their life, and I thought, okay, what do you want to try? And the first thing they said was shooting type of game, and I was kind of surprised because, again, it was not, it was like, not saying I like when I say surprise, I mean not saying it wasn't just for men, but I'm just saying it was not expected of that person because the way they are typically, like again, first mind says, like our mind says, like okay, this is how we perceive the person, and that's how what. I'm right. thinking. Totally surprised me when we hanged out that day. I showed her how to play Call of Duty Zombies, and that was a very fun experience. And she actually got to a point where she was better than me and kicking my ass. Yeah, <laughs> which was pretty goddamn good. Yeah, like I said, I think it just you know, the line is becoming more and more blurred, and it's becoming more and more socially acceptable for every audience, no matter what background you come from or what gender, you know, whatever. Um, just to open it up to a broader audience for gaming so uh on to the next topic though we got uh, gaming leads to violence so that's big a pretty topic. big one huh yeah it's always you know you see it all the time in the news I even mean, in the news now I, I think some it was like saudi arabia or some other country banned like a whole ton of video games for violence and violent acts due to one uh, social incident incident that happened where it didn't even kind of relate to gaming but they saw it as an opportunity to ban it for the violence yeah, it's gotten to a point where it's kind of ridiculous because now everyone, when they see violence, they just play in games. Because there was one time I remember someone was driving down a one way street, like nonstop, sure, and like no, it was two lanes, driving down way in the middle, hitting every car as much as they could down. And, and a lot of people said it's because they play games when they can choose example was GTA, yeah, and Theft Auto. I'm looking like, no, they didn't, they were just dumb enough or stupid or just wanted to hurt people and just drive down the street. That's right. all they were attending, they didn't do it because of a damn game, right. Yeah, I think I think uh, obviously the biggest one is Grand Theft Auto that people target all the time. A game is like for stress. That's what you do in a game. Yeah. Not in real life. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, it gives you ideas, but I just but I mean, you do that in the first. You you have to are. make that open choice to yeah. do that. Like for instance, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna play a Call of Duty game and think, oh, I can I can you know everyone's sprint zombie. and all you know climb on walls and everything. And Jump on a wall yeah. and just slide like I got this. Yeah. I got jump boost assist. But a lot of people, you know, that are in that kind of belief of, well, I see it as bad. I'm not going to let my children play it because it's going to lead to violence. You know, those are the type of people that grow up never playing a game. You know? There are people who, because of gaming, they actually have jobs to a point where, like, not developers, but also um, there are people who just make things that are in games, like, weapon-wise. Yeah. And they just use that to help them. Like, one person made an Assassin's Creed blade that goes out, and they use it as a machete when they're going through the woods to make it easier for the see their stuff in their right. house. Yeah, and on that same topic, um, I know, Eric, you play a lot of, uh, like, Fallout and all that kind of stuff. The modding community, you know, um, people put in certain things, too. Like, I don't know if it's necessarily in Fallout, but, for instance, the biggest one I can think of is uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, where they just added the Discovery Tour, where oh, yeah. it's meant... For teaching, you know, the, the the video game is what it is. It's you know, it, it has some violence in it, but it is mainly about the story and about the history of the places that you're exploring. What would you kind of say to somebody that would come up to you and be like, "Well, video games are all bad. I don't care if they have like a discovery tour if people are using them." Well, I could pull up my presentation from my senior year, and it would be here for about three or four hours. However, 
it's not video games that cause it and people will look back and you'll think of like the uh, Columbine tuners uh, I don't even remember their names anymore but I remember one was like Eric Harris and they were huge players of Doom sure. Doom had just come out at that time and he had made his own custom map of the school shooting aliens and you know there's a lot of speculations but really what it comes down to is their mental health Right. somebody who is perfectly mentally stable can play these games their whole life and never do anything right. I have no interest in buying a gun I don't even have an interest in hitting anybody because it's not something that you should do right. you know in a video game there's a blurred line people don't people think that there's a blurred line and that you know you do something in a video game and you're going to do it in real life sure no i'm not going to hop in my car cause thousands of dollars of damage and injure somebody that's stupid right that's not socially acceptable something that's virtual and has no effect on anything you know it doesn't matter if you do it or not but it it doesn't trans over to real life like people think it does he's not wrong I mean there was their time I remember how the slender man incident happened because oh, that yeah. one person because they had a mental health issue and they caused and they got their friend to commit suicide or whatever it was all because of a game because, but that wasn't because of the game though itself. It was because that person's mental health proceeded. The game was real. just an output for them to yeah. Yeah. blame it. Yeah, it was on. an output, and they thought, and it got to a point because their <laughs> mental health got it mixed with reality versus non. I mean, with, with fiction. Sure. And because of that, someone ended up dead. But not because of the game itself. It's because that was just a random game that someone's mental health proceeded as real. I mean, exactly. It could have been, been Mario, like a creepy pasta of Mario being hard version. And someone would believe that said Mario was going to come after you and kill you, and they killed their best friend. It would have happened either way. Exactly. People can do that. They can well. take they can take a game like Mario Kart and be like, well, that's the reason I went on a homicidal vehicular maniac and tossed rampage. Tossed out my trunk as right. I drove. Yeah, and I, well, on that con like topic too, I think a lot of the arguments that is put forth in these kind of situations when something happens is there isn't enough preventative. Again, when they're targeting games, that there isn't enough preventative to stop the parents from buying the game or to stop the people from buying the game. And a lot of times, I, sorry to interrupt on that, but yeah. there was, I did a uh, lot of, I did a lot for this high school project, and a lot of it is parents are buying these games without even knowing it. Yeah. And people will, they'll just go, they'll go, Mom, I want GTA, Mom, I want GTA, you know, to get their kid to stop begging them to get GTA. Yeah, just they'll just game. buy GTA. It's yeah. a lot easier for them to buy the game than have to sit and, and listen got, to their child complain. Yeah, at the store is like, hey, this is 18 and you see a license, and the person's like, I'll just do this just to get this over with. Well, and then sometimes too, you know, if they if they see that kind of interaction, a lot of the times, I well, I know uh, personally around here, I generally, sometimes I get ID'd for games, sometimes yeah. I don't. But I know a lot of the times, you know, they'll see somebody with a kid, or that has, you know, like, they look older, and they all, you know, they don't explain the game to them. Right. They just I have, I have never been ID'd at sued, all. Too, like, I go, one time I go to a sue of game stores, so a lot for out of the deal, like he said, and times they won't because either A, they recognize you, or B, is because they think you're that age, and they just don't care, they just want to get it over with because they don't want to go through the hassle of explaining to you, I need this, and right. all that. This is what the game's this about. Is. Yep. You know, this is what the game's about. Are you sure, like, just so you're aware there is this much violence or anything, or this this is, you know, what's in the game. To a point but at the same time, too, you got to look at it as... You should be informed before you go out and buy this game. It's kind of right. like in like a little ad thing, a cigarette pack, like, hey, just letting you know this will happen if you do this. Parents should kind of know that off the bat, the same thing for games. Like, hey, right. there's this, but make sure your kid has perfect mental health. Right. But well, then there's the parents who won't say, no, my kid's perfectly fine, not realizing that they have a social disorder without knowing it. I have right. something to bring up. Sure. So I feel like that... Um, Kids and violence in video games really match up because um, their brains aren't really developed, so they don't really know the difference between like right and wrong. So I feel like that um, kids at these young age, they're going to uh, they learn like these swear these swear words at such a young age, like six, seven, or, or eight. And I feel like it's becoming you know younger, and I'm younger because you hear all these kids, you know. Talking about you know sex and 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 all these bad words and stuff and that's probably one of the main reasons um, 
about violence in video games because of the kids. Yeah, I think it's definitely targeted in an aspect of where the parents see it as it's poisoning my kids. You know, it's it's going to cause them to be violent. But yeah. like I said, you know, a lot of it goes down to prior research. You have to know what you're buying. You know, I'm not going to buy my like kid. You know some o obscure thing because they want it, you know? Yeah, exactly. you gotta Without do some research, about it, yeah. at least. It's not the game, it's... It's, 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 uh, the, it's the kid, game. you know? No, yeah. when, I, when I was younger, my, when I used to buy games that are, like, f not for my age, my parents asked me, just give them an answer. I mean, yes, they, they, even if you know for a fact you shouldn't be buying it, if you just give them the answer and let them know, and then let them decide afterwards, even if, like, just yeah. to give them a heads up, because that way at least they know, and if they think it's right, then and then you just have that understanding that, okay, it's okay, or no, you shouldn't be doing this right now. Right. And again, going to what Connor said about that kind of age group type of thing, I think it's because <clears throat> Connor is right. When they're young, they're in that kind of set kind of stage where they don't understand right and wrong, and they're in that violent stage. I think it's because when they play games at that young age, since they're already violent as this, when they play games, they think that's normal to a point. And then I guess they grow up, they consider that normal because they weren't weren't told in between that one point for when they were young being violent to that point where now they are completely because when they're super old is because in that middle section they weren't told no this is not how things are normally are this is something that someone came up with and this is something you can use to do stress out for sure yeah and I know a lot of games now they give the pre-warning um, I know Assassin's Creed does I've seen a few other games yeah, where, where kind of the it's eyes. complete fiction like they let you know right off the bat this is complete fiction it's a work of art we did not intend this to be like anything in terms this is of reality from multiple sources of yeah. historicalness yeah you know that. so I mean it, it, like I said it, it comes down to parents informing themselves really what you are buying before you give it to the kid um, and kids and having that discussion with the kid like you know at some point like you said like look you know this is meant for fun this is meant for leisure this is not meant for you to take into reality and when it comes to that though there's that aspect of laziness on the parents side like the laziness and it's like Yes, I'm at this point in my age where I'll let my kid do what they want. I think that's yeah. why most as parents they, just don't care. Yeah, and I think that's why as that's why people are getting younger and younger and still doing getting worse because of that, because that modern age of laziness is because yes, my phone can do this. Yes, my phone that. Now it's creating that mindset to parents themselves, including younger version of parents that okay, now I can get lazy and lazier because something will do it for me. Right. The companies and they now they're punishing some and in a way I'm saying. It's getting to a point where people don't expect that the game companies themselves will put something on a label where we're seeing this, but they're not going to do that. Yeah. Because they don't think it's a health aspect until recently. Instead of blaming the games for violence, just <coughs> don't buy these games for your kids. They Dude, have a rating system for a reason. Right. What you got, Eric? You got something to add? Uh, I just wanted to say, going back to that topic of parents being lazy, the problem is, is let's say you're not going to game stuff let's say you know you're shopping let's say you're not even shopping with your mom and you know you're always talking about this new doom game how you really want it for your xbox and one day your mom goes to walmart and she's like all right i'll pick it up the guy at walmart's not going to say anything to her because there's no kid there yeah she's he's just thinking oh okay this 40 year old woman's buying a game rated for a 17 year old you know it's he's not going to say anything that guy he's just getting paid just to get it away and for something like i mean i don't see a lot of kids there but something like Pawn America. They're not going to, you know, every time they sell an M-rated the game, they're not going to say, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's really only something that, like, GameStop does. Right. So. It's up to the parent new. to go beforehand and research. All right. Yeah. So on to the next one here. We got most gamers are children or, you know, lower than the age of, let's say, 16. Squeakers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I think... It, you know, it depends on what game 
you're playing. You know, what Warren's kind of group. what kind of situation are you going to be playing in? Are you going to be playing a Minecraft? Are you going to be playing a Doom? A, yeah. Are you going to be playing like a game Fallout, like Minecraft Call and like Duty. Mario Kart, or are you going to be playing Doom and a single you know, player yeah. or multiplayer? Yeah, it, it really depends. And they're you know like going back to the rating system, they're rated for a for reason. reason yeah. If you're going into Minecraft, you can expect to play with children. You know, that's their that's a game that's meant for you know kids. Mm -hmm. or, or not, you know, not to say it's not you know adults can't play it, but it's it's geared towards children. Um, what do you got? Any, what do we got here? Uh, I like to bring up some. Sure. So what Austin was saying earlier in the uh, video, how um, kids start out playing video games. That that is why uh, mostly kids um, play them to sure. like start out. You know. Yeah, it, it, games like Minecraft allow them to begin to understand video games. It's a good early walk into learning how to play. There's actually, there's actually a class, I remember, I, th I was reading an article that there's a class, I can't remember, where, I think it's in the United Kingdom or somewhere, sure. where they actually have a class teaching kids how to play Minecraft because video games getting to a point where it's going to start becoming kind of like a basic kind of a thing to a point. I mean, there's also the parents who are grew up as gamers and now they want their kids to understand because they want to relate to their kids. And I think that's another thing about gaming is it's, again, like you said, it's an easy doorway to communicate with other people. Same thing for parents to communicate to their kids because it's something that the kids can understand very easily at such a young age. Sure. What you got, Eric? Uh, going back on Minecraft, I know that's really it's everybody plays video games. I mean, I've been playing video games since I was 12, and you know, I guess that brings a demographic of of you know what age of people are they when playing video games. You know, right. chances are if they're playing video games in elementary school, they're probably still going to be playing it when they're 20, 30 years old. So I, I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I mean, especially something like Minecraft, because I know a, a guy that I worked with, uh, you know, he's much older than me and he had a younger son, but he loved the fact that his son could play Minecraft because it's not just a game. It gets them thinking. It's creative, you know, like when you're really young, you know, you can go out and build these things and it helps develop your brain. It's, you know, you're not just monotonous killing things right. you know you're there's a purpose you're developing something you know and a lot of the times they use these games for not only educational purposes medical but, purposes yeah, for medical purposes like for, okay. Alzheimer's and everything yeah. can I go off this? so um, for example a while back when Destiny first came out there was this guy whose wife who reached out and said my husband loves this company or loves this game but he has a mental disorder like he does undeveloped gray matter mm -hmm. and they actually got in contact with the company and they gave him a gun and the game like in the game not like a real one but in the sure. game exclusive for him as well as a few features of the game and ha actually helped out with the uh, funding for his medical sure. and right now currently he's developing gray matter just by playing the game the, the game itself him playing is developing gray matter help him gain more mental stability as well as motor skills and other such and it's getting to a point where Gaming could have possible medical aspects to a point yeah. in these recent yeah. next few upcoming years. Yeah, I definitely think it's it's definitely going to be a situation where we see gaming not only evolve in terms of you know gaming, but in terms of other uses as well, like for teaching medical purposes. I think it's only going to get more and more useful as time goes on, and I think it's it's going to become to a point where it's completely socially acceptable to say I play video games. I mean we're we're, we're, we're almost there. We're there's practically pro, I mean, there's already there. pro leagues yeah. too that there are gamers who get paid twenty thousand every like every month or something just for playing a game. You know, and there there used to be the whole aspect of you know, oh, you're a gamer, you're gonna be alone, and it's like actually that aspect is never really there anymore yeah, because sure. and, it's and, you know it's a, it's a socially acceptable thing that anybody can pick up and do. Well, it's even a social. It's so, so acceptable in California right now. Currently, just this year. Year, there is now a Fortnite scholarship for yeah. college. If yeah. you play a certain KD in Fortnite, you can get a full ride scholarship to a college in California. Um, I heard apparently um, parents are hiring Fortnite tutors to teach them how to play Fortnite. Yeah, yeah they're paying them like kids. twenty dollars an hour. Seriously? And it's well, yeah, the South like Park episode all over again with Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, no, it's and. 
I mean, that might be a little, you know, excessive, I think, but... You know, it's we're getting into this age where gaming is becoming a new doorway. Yeah, a new doorway, a new situation to open up more possibilities towards things other than gaming. Communication, yeah. friendships, as well. You as know, you see people now. I think it even was like the military. Uh, was some article where they use Xbox controllers to pilot drones. So you know, it's it's we're at this point now where it's almost there. Gaming is going to be like our phones are all electronics. It's going to be social adaptable to a point where it's like. Like everyday life now almost. Yeah. yeah, so I mean that's kind of what we got for uh, kind of gaming misconceptions of gamers. So, All right, um, we're going to end that here right now. Thank you everyone for watching the seventh episode of the ACU podcast. Uh, like and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week. Bye.